So if you're looking to get into FPV this year and you're wondering if you should go down the route of buying a DJI Avata 2, which is well known for being a great drone for beginners, or should you jump into a regular bind and fly drone that's also very popular in the FPV community, then hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have more of an idea as to what to purchase as your first FPV Cinewoo. In amongst this, there is also a third option, which is to build your own FPV Cinewoo. But if you're starting in 2025, I'd say don't bother with this as it will be quite overwhelming and if there are already great drones out there pre-made then there's not much point in learning the building process as you can learn minor repairs along the way if you need to and yes i am fully aware that this video is pretty pointless if you have the budget to buy both however if you are just looking to dip your toes into this hobby or if you only have the budget for one of them then carry on watching and the last thing that i want to mention before we begin is that as of last month the brand new 04 air unit came out which basically meant that the camera system in all the bind and fly cine whoops and bind and fly drones going forward will be the same as the DJI Avata 2 previously the DJI Avata 2 had the 04 and the bind and flies had the 03 so it had a superior camera quality so this comparison was a bit harder but like I said as of last month the camera quality is identical so it's not something that I will be mentioning in this review as a comparison between the both of them. So what are the main reasons you should get yourself a DJI Avata 2 as a brand new FPV pilot? Number one, the first pro for getting an Avata 2 over a bind and fly FPV Cinewoop is the sports mode and normal mode, which are the non-acro modes on this drone, similar to flying a Mavic drone let's say but through your goggles and this can have the advantage of if you're a newbie or getting used to flying with goggles on which is a completely different experience to flying line of sight you can do this with the DJI Avata 2 to start with the safety of having the sensors to help you and being able to hover in place easily ultimately your goal with this will be to fly manual mode uh, with the goggles on but in the beginning just to get used to flying in normal mode or sports mode with the goggles on is a great way to start which you will not be able to do with bind and fly cine whoops they do have something similar in a normal fpv cine whoop which is something called angle mode but it's not as precise as normal mode on the Avata and I'd always recommend to try to get into manual or acro mode as quick as possible but just for those initial first flights whilst you get used to the goggles this can be helpful. Number two the emergency stop and return to home on the DJI Avata. The Avata 2 has an emergency stop button which again for beginners is great to have that peace of mind if you're flying in manual mode and you lose control or you're about to crash you can just press that button and it will stop very very quickly and hover in place back into normal mode just so you can catch your breath back before you start again. The Avata 2 has also a return to home similar to a Mavic drone which means if you press that it will use a GPS to come back to your takeoff position and also if you lose signal flick itself into return to home and fly back to you. These days it is also possible to put GPS into a bind and fly cinema but it's something that you need to go into beta flight to configure. And this brings me to point number three, which is you don't actually need any knowledge of software such as Beta Flight to make adjustments to the DJI Avata 2. All the settings can be accessed through the goggles. Number four, battery life. So the battery life of the DJI Avata 2 is far superior to the life of batteries you'll use with your bind and fly quads, probably by at least double, in some cases more. But this does come at a literal cost of being about $80 more than your standard LiPo battery. The batteries of the DJI Avata 2 are far better in every way. They're built better, they're built to last compared to a FPV LiPo. So it is worth the investment. And also as it is a high capacity battery, you won't need to carry as many of them. And not to mention the charging of them being smarter and more simple than charging FPV LiPo batteries. Number five, being able to change the tilt of the camera whilst in the air. When flying FPV, the tilt of your camera measured in degrees dictates how much you need to pitch forward and therefore how much throttle you need to add to keep the horizon level. All that to basically say the higher the tilt in degrees, the faster you'll be flying. With the DJI Avata 2, you will have the ability to change this whilst you're in the air flying, which is pretty game changing for FPV. It was when the first DJI FPV came out, whereas on a regular FPV, drone this has to be predetermined before you take off you have to manually get the tilt angle 
the way you want it and it can only be adjusted by landing and adjusting it manually and then taking off again. Number six, being able to hover in place without touching the sticks. If you're a beginner or coming from Mavic drones, this might seem like nothing special, but with a regular FPV cinema, hovering in one place actually takes some practice and means you need to be on the sticks to do it. With the DJI Vita 2, you can start up in normal mode, have it ready in the air and then flick it into manual mode when you're ready to start flying FPV. Now, the reasons you should get a non-DJI bind and fly over a DJI Vita 2. Number one, the DJI radio controller is very basic, to put it nicely. This might not seem like a big deal, but if you have flown both a DJI radio controller and a non-DJI one, then you will notice how much nicer that the gimbals are on the non-DJI radios and how they allow for much smoother and precise controls, especially when you are flying slower and trying to avoid that annoying up and down throttle bounce. Number two, durability. The DJI Vata first version came out and it was massively durable. It was pretty hard to break that thing. However, the DJI Vata 2 has definitely sacrificed some of that beefiness in the duct, possibly to help reduce the noise level and make it overall lighter for a better flying performance, which is a fair trade-off as I think most people would take better flying characteristics over durability, especially for a non-freestyle drone like the Vata 2. However, if you are a beginner looking to get into FPV, then you should be aware of this and even a mid-level kind of crash on the DJI Vita 2 over most bind and fly cine whoops will lead to some kind of damage to the frame which was previously not the case with the Vita 1 and it will mean you most certainly will need to have DJI care refresh if you're a beginner attempting to fly manual mode with this drone. Most other bind and fly cine whoops in the 3 to 3.5 inch category are built much better with more crash resisting materials such as carbon fiber frames and TPU ducts. This leads me on to the next advantage of a bind and fly cine whoop, which are that obtaining cheap spare parts and fixing yourself is a lot, lot easier than fixing anything with the DJI Vata 2, which looks like it's virtually impossible to do any work on. Before FPV became very mainstream, this was actually the norm for pilots to pick up a couple of spare motors or a spare frame just in case of damaging a crash that within one hour you can be repaired and back up in the air again. This of course is very useful if you're learning to fly manual mode and crashing a fair bit. The same cannot be said for the DJI Vata 2 which will need to be sent into DJI for repairs and then sent back out which could well mean you'll be out of action for one week plus. Number four so as I mentioned before angle mode is sort of like the equivalent of normal mode on the DJI Vata 2 so it's not full manual but it does keep the horizon level and easier to hover than in acro. Not many FPS TV pilots recommend flying angle mode at all but there are some instances where it is useful if you are looking to buy a ducted fpv drone like a nevada 2 or a bind and fly cinewoo chances are you want to do some kind of flying indoors in smaller tighter spaces flying your bind and fly drone in angle mode can actually be really good for this and it keeps the horizon level and allows you to fly slower indoors without getting as much throttle bounce as you might get flying in acro mode of course if you are a seasoned pilot with a lot of experience flying then this won't be an issue even in acro mode as you already know how to eradicate that throttle bounce through tuning your quad and lots and lots of practice however until that point angle mode can be very useful to do any sort of slow flying indoors similar to normal mode on the DJ Vata drones so the point is what happens if you want to go from angle mode to acro mode in the same shot in the same flight for example you might do some very slow flying in tight indoor spaces around some talent or through some very tiny tight gaps but then you want to go outside and the shot calls for you to do some acro rip around a little bit outside in more space this is the advantage of having a bind and fly cine whoop uh, this can be done whilst in the middle of your one take shot with a quick flick of a switch Whereas if you want to go from normal mode to manual mode on the DJI Vata 2, you need to flick a switch and then hover, line up those little dots to flick it into manual mode, basically making it impossible to go from normal to manual mode whilst carrying on the shot. Numero sank. DJI drones, including the DJI Vita 2, come with geofencing and other software restrictions such as altitude limits and no fly zones. You don't have the same issues with bind and fly FPV drones and they do not impose the same restrictions, giving you more freedom to fly, although you must still follow the regulations and guidelines. Number six is 
flight performance. Now, I wasn't sure if I should put this in as a reason to buy a Bindafly Cinewoop over the DJI Vata 2, because if you're beginning your FPV journey, you won't notice the difference in flying performance between the two, but it is worth noticing that if you are looking to do this long-term, then most Bindafly quads from reputable companies such as iFly, GEPRC, and loads of others will fly better and smoother than the DJI Vata 2, as the tuning on Bindafly drones these days are really, really great and very precise to that particular quad a couple of inches either side with an fpv drone is a bit of a challenge for me <laughs> on the last try i especially yeah. noticed this in windier or even breezy conditions where fpv cine whoops traditionally do struggle anyway because of the ducks but the DJI Vita 2 is especially bad. Overall, these better flying characteristics will also allow for some more complicated maneuvers, which the DJI Vita drones have notoriously struggled with. And if you want to see what I mean by this, then go check out this video where my Vita 2 had a mind of its own and almost caused me some serious damage.